but you, you've partly explained that. And that, br that brings us then to the center. Because if you're going to talk about succession, people have talked about the not too young to run uh, movement and bringing in younger minds instead of uh, this older uh, set which has been in charge. But again, you have the question of the quality of the younger minds. I mean, it's not only about the age. I mean, you can bring in a 25-year-old who is as horrible as the 75-year-old you want him to replace. In fact, that is the argument of many who argue against the young. They say, look, the governors were a general mess. If you take many of them were pretty young. They came in young and they made a mess of things. Uh, in, in fact, on my 62nd birthday, as part of the annual lecture series, uh, there was an interesting conversation I had a mix of young and old leaders after the uh, um, keynote from Dr. Yunkela, the Sierra Leonean presidential yes. candidate, and uh, President Obasanjo. Right. After their speeches, we had the uh, panel, which I uh, moderated. There was a bit of uh, an exchange between TLC and <laughs> which, uh, yes. which seems to have gone viral. Like people have been sending it. To, oh, what? what in fact, I have to say this. The first person, I didn't know about it. I didn't know he had gone viral. I was, you know, I get too busy. I don't follow these things. It was actually uh, Ambassador Kingibe, Obagana Kingibe, who said, I saw that young lady giving it to you. I said, give you one to me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the first time I heard that the thing was um, out there. I said, how did you find out? Were you, you didn't come to the you event. You didn't come to this event. Uh, it was later I then found that the thing had gone viral on the internet. A Nigerian lady who was in Scotland called me. He was, she was furious. <laughs> he says these young people have to know that, yes, okay, you got there very young, but see how your commitment has stayed through the years. How many of them who got there have done the kinds of things that you've been trying to do? I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's. So, in fact, I'm planning to do an episode of Patito's Gang in which I get to your sea and find one or two of those people who are angry about what she said, to meet her and say, you young people are not prepared, you're not doing the needful. Because they're not prepared. Many of them are not. But, and let me tell you what part of the reason why that is, and it's important, and I have to be, give credit to the origin of this, because I was having a conversation, I ran into General Akinri at this somewhere, and we're talking about Nigeria. And this very subject came up. And General Akinri, they said, look, when people like you were coming along, you were active in students' unions. Now, people are saying, Macron, uh, this is, there's one coming in Italy now, there's uh, one coming in um, Germany. Germany, there's one coming in. He said, look, all of these fellows cut their teeth in the students' union. You cut your teeth in the students' union. These ones now, we killed student unionism for them a long time ago, and they've not had the privilege that people like you had to, at 19, take the national stage and take issues. So, to be fair to them, yes, many of them are not prepared, but we have not also given them the platforms to be prepared. We abused the student union movement. Um, I tell people that as a 19-year-old, I was meeting with the vice president of Nigeria, if you will, put the appropriate title on what Shehu Yaradua the was at the time, back yes. in those days. How many 19-year-olds at 19 I got the foreign minister, challenged him to a position on Nigerian foreign policy, and he agreed to come and debate us at the University of Nigeria. I brought him to Lusuka, and we debated the course of Nigerian foreign policy in Angola and, and all of that. How many 19-year-olds are in that mood today? Yes, we can blame them, but we should blame ourselves for not doing enough to make that happen for them. Well, but does that say something also about the standards of education? Because again, it's like the case of the chicken and the egg, which is it. Because if you say that you can't really blame them because they were not prepared or, and they've not had the platforms, mm -hmm. to some extent, unionism in your day, and probably for a while after that, was part of a very high standard educational system, which mm -hmm. produced people who, I mean, students who could actually come out and challenge ministers and ministers could actually see something to be challenged about. Right now, <laughs> most... You know, after I did the TEDx thing in, at the University of London about 10 or so, or 11 years ago, in which I gave this example of my 
confronting Colonel Joseph Namven Garba, newly appointed foreign minister. Um, I said to them, you know, when I challenged General Garba as he was coming out of his car on the policy, and he began to argue with me, and we began to argue, and walked into his office, uh, I could do that because from age 15, I read Time Magazine and Newsweek cover to cover every week. Every week. So I had the information to engage the foreign minister. How many 15-year-olds um, are away from Pokemon? What's, what's this thing? <laughs> <Yes>, Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> to, 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 to do that with to have the discipline yeah. to be encouraged to, to read. So, so there's work. Uh, we shouldn't blame them completely. Parenting has a part in all of this. What are the values? I mean, I profited as a seven, eight-year-old being given books on Kennedy by priests and all of that. And, you know, because they were trying to inculcate an understanding of the meaning of service into us at that age, uh, we have a lot of work to do for young people, which is what we try to do with the Center of Values in Leadership, to essentially put young people through a process of being exposed and exposed and exposed uh, and developing a particular pedagogy that will help them realize that the future of their country is truly in their hands. And I give you a specific example of a feedback that amazed me. Because of this communication that I have from CVL to young people, I do a weekly, what do they call it, is it podcast or what? Yes. Uh, a video thing that I, I, I release uh, get out through Facebook and all of that. My January 1 message was essentially to say, the future frightens me. It frightens me because um, we're at the dawn of the fourth industrial revolution. Artificial intelligence is taking over. Yeah. In a few years, I'm talking about a long time, five years from now, Many of us are going to be moving around in driverless cars. In a few years from now, there will be essentially machines doing most of the jobs that we are doing today. Our country doesn't seem to even have begun discussing the subject, not talk of developing a strategy for it. And this is what I expect politicians to be doing, engaging in. My fear is that Nigeria could become the next Haiti. Haiti being the country that slept through the Industrial Revolution. Because one of my trick questions to MBA students for many years, which country was the, had the highest per capita income in the world in 1789? Of course, they always fail you. Yeah, they probably mentioned the United States. <laughs> so yeah. And when I tell them Haiti, everybody's a shock. Poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. See, plantation economy favored Haiti's wealth. And then James Watts redesigned the steam engine and Haiti was sleeping. Haiti became, will Nigeria become that as oil becomes irrelevant? I've been amazed at the response to that particular podcast. But you see, until we get those young people to be able to see enough of those kinds of things to jar their consciousness, we're not going to get where we should be going. One of the big impediments that we have uh, is corruption um, and it, it would appear as if that would probably be the one thing that runs through every other thing that we've spoken about so far and even those that we're yet to speak about um, it was one of the cardinal planks of your party uh, in taking power in 2015 and, I, I, and there will be those who would argue that it was in fact the principal reason why General Buhari was made uh, was elected president how far have they? How far have they gone in your view? Have they have they done well? Well, um, you know, with every problem, you have options of strategies. Uh, I think for me, very importantly, that there has been a continuous hammering on the importance of that subject is a plus, because you see, there are many people who want to wish it away. Uh, they want to, ah, oh, you know. And then they tell you, oh, you see, the other people did this, that, other people did that, this, and nothing Nobody has been done enough. Uh, keeping it on the front burner is important for us because I really don't think Nigerians understand how much harm corruption does to us. Mortal blow to the body of this country on a continuing basis. They rationalize their own corrupt behavior and see other people as corrupt. 
we have to get it in to understanding that corruption is such a huge problem, not so much because of their actual material yeah, right. value taken out of it. The way it distorts decision making, the way it becomes a disincentive for more productive activity. Look, if I can just sit in my home and get a piece of paper from somebody and give it to another person and I'm living well, what's the incentive for my neighbor to try and work hard? No, nothing. So he just begins to look for how he can call anybody and we create this society that's not creating enough for everybody. And then the income distribution widens. One of the most painful moments of my being was when our former president said at the World Economic Forum, look at the private jets, it's a measure of our progress. Something that I never did throughout, I called somebody in the villa, please beg him not to repeat it. As if to say to me, who the hell are you? He repeated it the next day. <laughs>